Hey guys, welcome to Need It Make It. In this video, we're going to convert this pile of scrap metal into a usable blacksmith forge. So stick around. The goal with this project is to not really spend any money. I know it's going to cost electricity and it's going to cost some welding rods, but really I'm going to use as much scrap metal as I can. I've got this stuff and I have a bunch of other scrap metal. So here I have an old brake disc. This one's pretty small, but I think it's going to work fine. Some old pipe and a big nut as well that I can use maybe as the clinker breaker. Don't know if that's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a try. And one more thing, I also have this. And what is this abomination you say? Well, it is a motor from an old vacuum. Pretty terrible, right? But we'll try and convert this to something that's a little bit more professional, but still works fine. The first step is to remove this tabletop off of the frame. And I have to grind the welds off. I've already gone ahead and done that in this case. So I can flip it right over. And it's got a nice look around the outside. And that's going to contain the coal perfectly. Next, we need to mark a circle for a cutout that we need to make in order to insert the brake disc or brake drum into the steel top. With the hole marked, I want to make sure that I have space all the way around before I make that cut, just to confirm that there isn't going to be an issue. I'm gonna to try to get as close to circular as I can. And for that, sometimes it helps to grind from both sides. Next, I need to plan out the connections for the pipework underneath. And in order to do that, I need to take that other motor apart and see what I'm working with. Also, I really don't wanna have a complex system with a flexible pipe. I'd like to have a direct connect and be able to disconnect it very easily as well. I've mounted some steel fence post with some outdoor Gorilla Tape to this motor housing. And it's a pretty strong connection. I need to measure down three and a half inches to where the small pipe will intersect this larger pipe. Now I'll just mark it for the cutout and take my time doing as clean of a job as I can making a hole there because I want to have an unobstructed flow through because of the size of this small pipe. And I've also shaped the end of this pipe in order for it to connect nicely to the larger pipe. Next, I'd like to work on a clinker breaker mechanism. And again, I'm just using all the scrap that I have, so it's not ideal. From what I've seen, a clinker breaker is typically three-sided. And my guess is that it's three-sided because you don't want the peaks much higher than the low sections, than the valleys. And that's when it's rotated, it's not going to completely dislodge all of your coal and possibly send it down the pipe. So I want to try and reproduce that the best I can with the materials I have. And the best idea that I have is just simply to weld on some washers. I need to drill the through hole all the way through the large pipe to receive the clinker breaker shaft. And unfortunately, my drill press vise is just not big enough to hold that pipe. So I moved up to my larger vise in order to hold this. And if you're wondering why I'm using quick grips, it's because I just finished the restoration on this drill press and I don't want to mar up the nice paint finish just yet. The hole is just a little bit snug, so I'll finish that up with a hand file just so I get a nice fit. And I have these two holes that are drilled to accept two screws in order to lock the shaft in place on that nut.
I'd like to make my own hinge, so I'm just cutting up this little piece of tubing. For any stainless steel to steel and steel to steel connections, I'm just using 8 inch 7018 welding rod, and I'm running this at uh, 90 amps. And I'm finding actually this is welding really nice. This is uh, not what I was expecting at all. Normally when I try and weld tubing, I have a lot of difficulty because of those uh, contours and trying to go around and create a nice smooth weld. Uh, but in this case, it's not a problem. I have the main tube spaced off the tabletop just slightly in order to centralize that pivot point. I'm going to go in and then tack weld and then I'll lay down two more beads after that. Now for the cast iron to steel welding, I'm using nickel 55 welding rods. They're eighth inch as well. And I have not preheated any of these parts, but I have upped the amperage to 105. And here I'm welding on a little flapper door. And I'm using 6014 welding rods, which are a little bit smaller. I have the amperage a little bit too high. Obviously, it's spattering quite a bit, uh, but it is doing the job. And I'll clean this up a little bit later. I'm welding on this small piece of steel tubing because I really would like to keep this assembly uh, separate from the table, separate from the stand, and to be able to drop it in. And this little piece of tubing will allow me to remove that extra extended piece that I need below to keep that flapper shut. And now it's just a matter of welding up a few more pieces and we're nearly finished. And one of the last pieces I need to make is a foot for the center here. And I'm just going to make it three points rather than four. I think that's going to be a bit more steady on uneven surfaces outside. And I'm going to finish painting it up with some old trim cloud that I've had hanging around. While I wait for the paint to dry, I'd like to focus on this motor and finishing this up. I painted everything. I was able to find a box and mount it directly to this motor housing using the steel bracket. And there are just some nuts on the inside of this. I've gone ahead and already wired this up. And now I just need to connect this top piece, which has the impeller inside of it, which free floats inside there with a gasket. And for that, I'm going to use this rubber band and some large zip ties. This method is really cool because if I ever want to remove this motor, I can cut off one of the zip ties, or if I ever need to retension this, I can just tighten them up. Very simple compared to what I had before. Okay, let's try it out.
for the fire pot assembly itself and the area just around where the fire pot sits. I decided to treat that with some high temperature enamel that I had sitting around. This is the stuff that you'd use for wood stoves, for example. And I've kept the gray trim clad paint just away a little bit. I'm going to take some tape and plug these holes. Using the materials that I have on hand, I'd like to fill in this area, the square area on the inside, so that this acts more like a traditional fire pot and funnels the coal in toward the inside. So what I have for that is sodium silicate in here, known as water glass, and that is a high temperature adhesive. And here I have kitty litter. This is bentonite clay. These are all the materials that you would use if you were making a casting mold. So I already had those on hand. Uh, you don't strictly need to use this. You could probably get away with just clay. Other people have used uh, plaster of Paris and sand mix for the inside of this. There are some other options. The first step is to prime the inside so that I get a good adhesion to the inside of this disc. And the next step is to mix the clay and sodium silicate together. And I'm going to do that in a couple patches. Before I leave this to set for a few hours, I'm going to do one more coat of sodium silicate just over the top to seal everything in. Truth be told, I broke a tap off in this side and while I was welding, I welded up that hole. I really only need one for the corresponding shaft. I've just flattened a little spot for the screw to tighten down onto. Let's go ahead and put this together. There's going to be quite a bit of heat buildup in through these pipes. Now this is open, so there's going to be airflow through here, but I've still tried to keep the motor and all the electronics as far away as possible. Now what I also need to do, because these two pipes were quite a bit different in size, is add a spacer. It both acts as an adapter between the two sizes of pipes, but it also reduces the amount of heat being transferred from one pipe to the next. Time for a first test. I think that's going to work just fine. And now it's just a matter of finding a cover plate for that dimmer, and then we'll be ready to give this thing a try. All right, how about we see if this thing actually works? So I had some trouble starting this up because it's been raining today. I had no dry lumber and I hadn't had any coal that had been cooked up, so it wasn't ready. So I went ahead and cut some new pine uh, to start this quickly and just coke up some coal quick and see if we can get this going. I think there's going to be some adjustments I want to make. The flow is a little bit too high even on the lowest setting for that motor. So uh, I may need to prop that flapper open just a little bit, or maybe I can have something on the main post that would allow me to twist and open or twist and close, uh, depending on how much flow I want at that point.
So the forge has been on for about 10 minutes or so. This is nice and cold. Everything under here is actually quite cold. So that's good. The motor and everything should be protected just fine under there. Go ahead and test the clinker breaker. I'm not sure that there's a lot of clinker in there, but at least we'll know whether it rotates or not properly. That seems to work okay. And that's it for this video. I hope maybe this video inspired you to get out there and build something from some scrap you have hanging around. Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.